All right, we're gonna make an oyster stew, which is a family tradition. And we used to have it at my mom and papa Carr's house. But actually, it was your papa's grandfather that started this, and they used to have oyster stew for breakfast. So before your, your mom and your um, uncle were born, we used to go up there on Christmas morning and have an oyster stew. And then when they came along and we wanted to be at home Christmas morning, um, Peggy would bring, my mother-in-law, would bring the oysters to my house. She even brought her own pot. It's like you could right. cook oysters, but only in one pot. So she brought her pot. So today I'm teaching you so that you can carry on the tradition. Okay? Okay. All right. You can only cook oysters in one pot. <laughs> That red pot. It's this one. And mainly because it's got little measurements on the side of it, and I know how much stuff we put in, okay? Mm -hmm. So you gotta go pick up fresh oysters. The bigger, the better, okay? Okay. Pick up oysters, and then you pick up a little more of the liquid they come in, that comes in it, so that it gives it a little bit more flavor. But you gotta put the oysters in here, maybe on about medium and put butter. Can you come over here and open this butter? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the butter in. I put about two and a half, three sticks. There's no recipe for this. It just tastes good when we get it done. That's one. I'll help you, I'll do one. You do another one. Okay. Is there anything in the pot to start with? The oysters are in the pot. The oysters are in the pot. And how many oysters? Uh, a, a quart of oysters. And actually, it's a little better if you get a quart and a half, but darn, they've gotten so expensive, we're just doing a quart of them. Maybe the price will go down when um, everything else goes down in price. Ha ha. And how much butter? Uh, about two and a half, three sticks. Okay. Okay. Now we're just going to wait till this starts getting good and warm. Then we, we'll add a little bit of milk to it. But we're waiting to see the oysters curl up. The edges have to curl. Look there. See? They're not. They're not curled at all. Okay? And we're waiting for that to happen. Okay? Okay. So we have to heat them up and let them curl. And when, when can you make oysters do? What months of the year? Or is, well, know? they say you can make it in the months that have an R in it. An R Not, in it or end in an R? Has an R in it, like March. Okay. Although I shouldn't tell you that, because then we'll have to cook them in March, too. Well, February has an R, too. Yeah, February, March. Not January. April. It's really summer months, they say, and I don't know why. I think... Bryce probably needs to Google that. Maybe ju they're just fresh. I don't think they, I think uh, the yeah, I don't think they are. I but I don't think it makes any difference now. It used to be you could only get them fresh certain areas at a certain time. Although where I get the oysters at, um, oh God, I forgot the name of it there in Concord. But um, they get their oysters locally because there was an issue with some, um, what, about three or four months ago? And um, I made sure that my oysters was up coming from that place that had issues. And local as in North Carolina coast? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. We're just waiting for it to heat. What is the traditional way that the Carr family ate their oyster stew? Like? Like on when? was Christmas morning, but yeah. you have to take your crackers. And I think you guys started that. Uh, we were a little more refined and then just take your crackers and you smash them up in there. But now y'all just take a whole box of crackers and smash and them. What kind of crackers do we eat with? Uh, we need just regular saltine crackers. And yeah. I know some people put a little um, spice like Tabasco and that sort of thing in their oyster stew, but um, that's an individual taste. So. Right. We kind of do that on the side. Yeah. yeah. We're just doing southern oyster stew. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard, Bryce. Your your mom and your uncle just pretend they don't know how. 
so that I have to fix the oysters. And I think it's because they like it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the occasion today is your birthday. And it's my birthday, and I'm fixing the, oysters. That you're stew. making oysters stew for all of us. Yeah. But we did have it on Christmas. We just did. We didn't do it Christmas morning. We did it Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like that switch of tradition. What did you think, Bryce? Do you do prefer Christmas morning, Eve? Christmas morning, or Christmas Eve? I prefer having it overall. All both times. Anytime. Yes. Anytime is a good time. <laughs> I think it's very unusual that you like a young person likes oysters too. That is true. Yeah. yeah. It's like the. Well, you grew up with it. It's kind of growing like growing up with the church Brunswick stew. You know, some people don't like Brunswick stew, but we tell everybody they used to put it in our baby bottles when we were babies, so we grew up with it. Mm. That's what, not true. What were the other traditional things that Grandma Carr used to make? She always made. Ooh, it's, it's it's moving. Okay, if it starts doing something, you need to stir it every once in a while because we don't want this to burn. So I'll let you. She always fixed um, cheese bars for dessert. Mm hmm. And it seems to me like we had them it twice in December because we talked her into doing it once there's due when we put up the Christmas tree. And that was a big deal at her house. Oh, okay. Putting up the Christmas tree. So we'd eat a oyster stew and then start put the tree up. Yeah, sing Christmas carols. Sing Christmas carols. And the tree was always too big. Yep, and they had to cut it off. Every year. They thought Somehow. that ceiling was... 15 feet tall, and it was probably closer to 9. It was like 12. In I that don't room. know. It, it was, was tall in that The middle houses were very tall roofs. Yeah, that's the reason. It Which I never tall. quite understood because of the heating. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Just keep stirring. I like to use a wooden spoon so I don't tear up the oysters. Okay. <laughs> And then also for Christmas, because we put the Christmas tree up, what, three or four weeks ahead of time? Yeah, by Christmas it was dead. And it was always a cedar tree. Mm -hmm. And at Christmas, you could sit around the Christmas tree and just hear the cedar leaves falling yeah, down. Yeah, hear the little needles just the falling crack, 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 down. Crack we always, and we always use real lights. Real lights. They were real incandescent You were always afraid you were going to. They were really hot. Burn the on, house on down. On a tree that is crackling because it's drying out so much. Yeah. Yeah, the tree was, it was as tall as the uh, ceiling. And sometimes I didn't want to cut the bottom of it off because if they cut the bottom off, it just misshaped the whole tree. So they'd just take the, if it was that much too tall, they'd just take that part and tuck it in behind the tree. <laughs> so just tuck it in. <laughs> And there were two screws, great big bolt type screws in each corner, in the corners on the side. So they tied the tree up because yeah, it, so would it would fall. over because it was a big tree. I think it fell one year. Oh, is that what caused that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And she always had a thousand ornaments to put up. Yep. And it was always the prettiest Christmas tree she's ever had. Yeah, every year. <laughs> And we, we associate oyster stew and Christmas, but uh, we do it other times too. I think you're supposed to be stirring this. I was, and I thought that was enough, but I guess not. Imagine how that would smell. Not good. No, I don't. So, so far all that's in there is a pint or pint and a half of oysters and uh -huh. two and a half to three sticks of butter. A quart and a pint. A quart and a pint? Yeah. Of oysters? Yeah, a quart. Okay, quart and a pint. A quart of And oysters. some extra juice. And yeah, and, and for posterity, 
maybe Carrie should say how much they have grown up. How much were they for a quart? Quarter oysters. Sixty dollars. Sixty. Sixty. How much? Fifty nine ninety nine. Mm. And I can remember just about two or three years ago they were they were like twenty five. So it's a quart of oysters and a pint of the juice. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. I, I guess those oysters for the union and decided to start char charging more if they was going to give up their life for it. I'm not sure that's actually how that works. <laughs> I don't think oysters are sentient beings who know that they're being killed. It could be the oyster farmers, though. Yeah, the oyster, the men to go yeah. out in the boats and do the oysters. I guess the gas went up on the prices for them to fill their boat up with gas. Which actually doesn't it sound half wrong. Probably right. Of course, it's kind of like other things. They went up because they could. I mean, it's kind of crazy. <coughs> How's it looking? Any curlage? Yeah, they're starting to curl. I guess you could overcook them, but you guys that eat oysters have never complained about them being too tough. Nah, they're good. Rice, do you have the half and a half all open? Or are they? They're all slightly open. And they got the little tabs pulled. And I like to use half and half. Take some people half. use whole milk and um, some canned milk. So I don't think it changes the flavor much. Half and half is just richer, and then we'll put in some whole milk. Rice, look, see how those are starting to curl up. Hmm. Look, see, they're separating and curling up. <laughs> we don't want to make anybody sick by eating raw oysters. But I guess people do. Yeah, so. Some people do like to do that. We just want all the flavor out of them. Sound. You just gotta talk loud. I thought my mom was. You were. You've been doing good. We'll let them cook a little bit longer. Let's have a look. What do you think? Are they curling? A little bit. Ugly looking things, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <laughs> a muscle. Yeah. A muscle? Yeah, it's a, that's what type of species they are. Yeah. Did you learn that in science class? No, I've known about that. How was your testing? That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> we're here for oysters, not school. <laughs> I'll take that part. Oh, good. Yeah, it's good. You don't have to work anymore. Yeah, I'll let you work. <laughs> So what am I waiting for right now, besides curling? Yeah, I'll just make sure they're... Just curling? Yeah, they're done. <laughs> we can let them cook a little bit when we put the milk in, too. But... And Mom, on your temperature, how many notches do you have in your... I got it all about medium. Well, how many notches? How many notches total are in the, like, in the dial? How many... Well, that one it particularly is on five. But you got it all. Okay, you got five notches total. No, 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 no. She's got nine. Hi, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
they hide. It's getting too technical. I got you. Just it. cook them. I see. I see. Just you cook. are on like a meat. Okay. Got it. What do, you think? Uh, what do you think? It's not up to me. I think you can go ahead and I'll stir a little bit and you add the milk in. Whole milk or half milk? I add the half and half folks. I'd rather use all of it. All of it? Well, we're going to take it up to right about. Uh, well, right. yeah. We don't want to dilute them so that we feel like we just eat drinking milk. I mean, eating milk. You can't eat a liquid. <laughs> like the only liquid you can eat is ice. That's just water. Only contains water. Yeah, you might want to back up. You can pour it slower, you know. I'll think about it. Why yeah. is how big are those half and half jugs? Read, read on the front. I think it's in the. Um, one quart. So we yeah, got two, two quarts then. Yeah. A half gallon. So add some milk to it. All of it or some of it? See that mark right there? Which one? About four. That was good. About that. Ready and now. Maybe. A little more? And don't use margarine. Use real butter. Real butter. Compared to fake ones. And this is when they'll burn. Now it's to have the milk in there. So what? Milk makes them more flammable? Well, milk sticks to the bottom. So. Oh. This is not healthy in any way. I just realized how unhealthy this is. That's what we get it. Three to four <laughs> sticks of butter. Nah. Just butter. Oh, stick that at the refrigerator. I'll make a nasty mess now. It's got milk in it. Should somebody be stirring it? Should somebody? Well, it's not. It's, it was pretty cold now. Okay. Yeah, after all the cold things we got to do it. Yep. Hot again. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> How you doing, Norm? What do you know? Not enough. <laughs> afternoon, everybody. We're videotaping oyster shoe making. Okay. Can <laughs> put any aloe in there? Probably not. Oh, no. <laughs> not. <laughs> Once you sit down beside Carrie and get in the film, I got a couple questions for you about oyster shoe. Oh, Lord, I'm Oh no. I don't want to tear them too bad. I don't have my after all I'm going to eat it. 
Peter right there. That's we, right. We already told that story. Or yes. read it if he recounts at the same time. Yeah. I'm going to get in the picture. Take mine out. <laughs> take mine out. <laughs> How you doing? You got to sit over there. Come on, Bryce, we got the camera. Not just me. Huh? You got cameras everywhere. Did you do one on the pod? <laughs> oh, good got question. my cam. Yeah, I'm going to break a lot of cameras all I tell you. What is your earliest memory of Oyster Strew at Grandma Carr's house? Gosh, I ate it since I was a kid, a baby. <laughs> I like Bryce. Yeah. I mean, we had it. We had it. We had a lot of time for breakfast. Just in general. In or? general, we had it in the afternoon too. It was just a normal thing. Uh huh. There's a grocery store beside the house, and they had oysters on in the oyster season. And, okay. And you go and buy them, or and we order from a grocery store. You could, they bring them to you. So. And and back then in the 19 teens. When you were having oyster stew yeah. at the yeah. grocery store next door, did they only have oysters with months that ended in R? Yeah, yeah, they're just in season. They're the same thing back then. Okay, all right, because now you can get them by yeah. any time, but yeah. to get them fresh there, it was during those months. And did you have it like once a month? Did you think? No, or? no it, was, it was pretty regular. It wasn't that regular because it was expensive too back then. But, oh, okay. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if anybody ate the oysters at the time. Oh, none of the family did? I don't remember. <laughs> and who was sitting around the table at those meals, like the regular meals? It could have been anybody back in days, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it could have been kids. I mean, we had a lot of nephews and nieces staying there, and there people from anybody in town, I mean, around the place. They were just normal. Yeah. So she grandma, invited the, the table invited. was always full. Let me put it. Grandma Carr of the Spears, Spears fed everybody. Yeah. Her table was open to everybody. Mm -hmm. And she made enough for everybody. And right. If you didn't eat it all, she'd get mad. <laughs> so that's the way it was. <laughs> and Grandma Spears was your grandmother. It was my great-great-grandmother. Yes. Yeah. But she was primarily the cook? She done everything. Okay. That's what she did. And she, she I, I bet she fed at least 10% of the kids in the neighborhood at all times. <laughs> you think so? And she fixed a full lunch every day because when we were working in Concord, you'd take an hour for lunch and go to her house and eat lunch. But don't expect lunch or anything hot when the Yankees were playing baseball, right? On Saturday. On Saturday. On Saturday. Or the World Series when she was watching. She was and she watch didn't that. know a thing about baseball. So she liked Yogi Berra. <laughs> she liked the announcer? No, no, the catcher. Oh, but he was a catcher then. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was a catcher. Not an announcer. Dizzy Dean and Pee Wee Reese. But he was funny too. I was talking about him yesterday. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was nice. I mean, she knew nothing about baseball. And uh, they only had one game it was on Saturday. Most of the time it was the Yankees and somebody else. And she say, she'd always say, Errol, let's go watch Yogi. Yogi. She didn't know what was going on, but she liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matter. And what were some other traditional dishes you remember Grandma Spears making? Oh, beans and potatoes. Man, I could eat that every day. And anyway, she fixed about everything. I mean, we had every morning she get up, fix fat back. And okay. it, it was used for the grease was used, the lard was used for cooking, and there was always a plate of that on the table. And you get your biscuit, a piece of fat back, and you're good for a snack. And, that kind of stuff, make gravy and all that kind of, just like She'd get food. collards and you know, you'd have to wash them and wash them and wash them and she'd spend half the morning washing. And then Peggy found out you could put them in some kind of mesh bag and put them in the dishwasher. You pretty, I'm that? pretty sure she used pantyhose. You think? Uh-huh. Well, she probably read that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So they washed the collards in the dishwasher? Mm-hmm. whole lot easier. We ate a lot of collars and a lot of easier standing there at the sink washing them. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, when she made, she didn't make a small pot of nothing. No time there, remember. There sometimes when that many people there, or normally, I mean, not living there, but it all get gone. Yeah. It was normal. How many, of the, how many people were living at the house in general? It was, it was, it was hard to say. I mean, probably, it's always maybe 
four or five kids living there, maybe three or four or five, six. Could be some even time more. And then grandmother, my mother, and uh, grandfather, Norman. Yeah. What did grandfather, grandma, grandpa Spears do for a living before he, he worked passed? in the mill? Did he work in the same mill that Grandpa yeah. Carr and Grandma Carr worked in? Yeah. Oh, really? He was a loom fixer and he's a barber mm -hmm. after work. Okay. Hmm. As a matter of fact, I still got his toolbox. Oh, really? It's a good okay. shop. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when Grandma Spears gave him the toolbox, he opened it and it had elementary pictures probably of of Daryl and Tommy tacked in it. Oh inside. And then at one time it's had y'all's pictures in it, but I don't know I don't know. Make you better open that toolbox, make sure your picture's in there, Bryce. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where it is. It's in the well I don't either. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. But in one one mem one memory I do remember. Okay. My grand back back in everybody the barbers and they still do some of them shave you with a straight razor. Yeah. And uh, to make it really sharp, they had a razor strap in the air, and that's what they usually whoop the kids with. And that thing hurts, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, some experience with grandpa's razor. Strap. Oh, I, I I I've met that razor strap a couple of times in my life. This thing leave a whip on you, buddy. I'm telling you. They bring the razor strap out. They, they used to say that we got the razor strap. They brought it out. Yeah. And I remember you tell a story about was it blackberries or blueberries that you had to pick? Blackberries. And where where did you go pick the? How far did you walk to go get? Those? It, it on there in the mill down there. Oh, okay. Right. There's a there's a a branch behind the mill, and it, and to me it was interesting because uh, it was like a. Which a, mill is that? What was the mill number? Gibson Mill, Gibson. six, and. Uh, it was on that end between the railroad track and the stuff. There's a creek down through there, but Buffalo Creek. And uh, the uh, people that lived on the other side of the creek, to get across, they had two a telephone pole on each side with a cable on the top and a cable on the bottom. Oh. And they had to walk that cable, hold okay. on to the top cable, and, and, and they come, they had their lunch box and okay. coming to work back and forth to work. And that was always the goal of us kids to get tall enough to reach that top cable so we could go across that thing. Oh. Okay. But we went tall enough to the adults. Was the railroad track there at that time? Yeah, the railroad track's always been okay. there. But the, the tr creek was down there behind the mill. Yeah. And uh, the mill was fenced in, and stupid. from the fence down was uh, just, just vacant land. Yeah. And the Indians used to be down in there, and we, found, we could find the airheads down there all the time. Oh, down by the creek and everything? Yeah, and that, we call it the meadow. And that's where we'd go hunt rabbits and possums and stuff right. like that. But you couldn't shoot, you had to catch them. You trap them or yeah, yeah, but uh, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't shoot a gun in town. Yeah, what'd you do with a possum when you caught one? The, the dog chased him on the tree, and us men, us boys, had to go over and throw them out. Throw them out of the tree, and somebody and then the, and, and the dogs would grab them, and we put them in a tow sack or oh, what we call it, tow sack. And what good is a possum? What do you do? Well, with we possum? sold them for a dollar. Okay, yeah. and people would eat them. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Is that what you got for a rabbit too? Was a dollar? No, no, we ate the rabbits. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. My grandmother, she 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 cook a rabbit good, and she cooked squirrel good. Oh, okay. They were very good. We we had she made gravy and stuff like that, and that we'd be doing stuff like we're doing here with the oyster stew. Oh, okay. Had, had a lot of gravy and biscuits and stuff like that. Yeah. Stretch that rabbit and that squirrel out pretty good. Stretch yeah. the food. But that was, that, was, that was kind of a rarity for us to do When that. you were sent to get blackberries, for did Grandma send you to go get blackberries primarily? Yeah, and I mean, you know, that was a normal thing for the kids. They could make, make a little bit of money picking them and sell them to their neighbors and oh, stuff. Oh, okay. But we never got to sell ours. Oh. You ate them. <laughs> no, we had to, well, we eat them, but my grandmother, she liked to uh, make blackberry preserves. Oh, okay. For, all for the year. You're right. And my grandfather, he loved that blackberry preserves. And but we like blackberry pie, and so she get us up four thirty in the morning during blackberry season. She'd have us two our two buckets and one big bucket we had to fill up. The little bit of picking, she'd make some lunch and sandwiches and some water in her jug and yeah. a and who was jar. Going with you? Huh? Who was going me and my brother. 
Tommy? Yeah. Okay. And we did have one cousin about that age, and he was with my son when he was there. At 4.30 in the morning in the summer, it still wasn't daylight, though. No, but we got out and ate breakfast. As soon as it got daylight, we was out the door. Oh, I see. Heading toward the pass, and it took us probably 30 minutes to get where we picked them at. Okay. Of course, the briars and stuff like that, but we didn't mind it because it's like an adventure. We had sandwiches. There's a little creek that had a spring in it. Set that water down in there to get cold, and we had stuff we could play in the creek. And now we come back with that bucket full of strawberries, I mean blackberries, didn't mean there. But we didn't come back with that blackberry bucket full, we might not even come back. So it was, that was mandatory. Well, what would happen if you came back without We'd probably get whooped. <laughs> oh. But we always got back, but it, you know. like we're goofing off. Well, you know, it, sometimes it's hard to find blackberries. Blackberries are hard to pick and they're sticky and you got all jiggers and all kinds of stuff on you. But you know, it, to me and him was kind of adventure. Snakes down there and all that stuff. And the place where we picked them, nobody going there because it's too dangerous on kind of snakes. Oh. We also get jiggers. Jiggers, yeah, all that stuff. But, but the rest of people wouldn't go over there. The blackberries were huge over there for a while, blackberry. They would be. Oh. We could fill the bucket up pretty fast. But it was, it was fun. I mean, yeah. other than the scratch and everything. But we knew the second day when we come in, so you can have blackberry cobbler and ice cream for us. Oh, okay. That was the treat, you know what I mean? I see. That's what I wish you for. <laughs> and how many days would you go pick All during the season, it's maybe, maybe three weeks or four weeks or something. And you go about every day? Every day. And this is, so if you're, but you're going for school then? Or? Yeah, it was the summertime. Oh, it's the summertime. Summertime. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Summertime. Yeah. But I mean, it was, it, it was interesting and, and we found a lot of airheads and stuff like that. And there was three, in, I think there were Indian graves, mammals down there and we never messed with them because that's what we was told. Uh, but I always wondered, but there's a so ton of Indian water. airheads and stuff down there because I guess the Indians had very good water there with that spring and everything. So, yeah. And blackberry deep too, and rabbits and possums. <laughs> I reckon I don't know. Bryce, give us an update over there. What's been going on while we've been talking? Yeah. Well, we've added a little bit more milk and we've added salt and pepper. How much salt and pepper? Don't know. Just you you don't taste it to find out, Bryce? No. You add your own. I usually add too much, so we didn't add a lot. And then what are you, are you, are you bringing it up to a certain temperature? You we, brought it it, to we brought a, it back up to a ball, okay. and now we're just going to let it stay on low while we find the oyster pots. Oh, okay. I All mean, right. oyster bowls. All right. Is so that pretty much done? Yep. Okay. Doesn't take long. Just have to keep stirring it when it gets milk in it so it doesn't burn. Okay. I don't know nothing about cooking it, but it's, I know how to eat it. It was always ready when we got up that early in the morning. Was, I don't know what time she got up to cook it, but it was always early. Okay, I need to find the bowls. And when you were eating oyster stew back then, did you crumple up the crackers like we do now, or when did that start? No, happen? because it was not in that kind of package. Oh, okay. What kind of crackers did you use? They were saltine crackers, but there's four square, four crackers to a square, like a, almost the size of a piece of bread. Okay. It's stacked in a pack like that, and it's wrapped in like a... Uh, what do you call it? Wax paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we learned that technique when it come out in them bags. And we, it was easier. Oh, there's some more back there. There is somewhere somewhere. Oh, uh -huh. right up there. I'm not going to get those. Well, get the stool. Oh, I need that for a second. You got it, buddy. You want me to hold you up, son? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'll let you stand on my head. One, two, three, four, five, two more. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa. He's talking about getting, getting spankings. I think the worst, my mother used to use a switch. Right. You know. Do you have to go I, pick your own switch? Uh, yes. a couple times. And one time she told me if I went, because we live on Highway 49, if I went past that bush, which that meant the street was probably 20 feet away, the road. Yeah. Then I was going to get a spanking all the way back down to the house. Mm. So I did it. <laughs> Just to see if that she was true did. or? <laughs> and I had to go back up there. Right, and she got the rest of the down switch, And it wasn't big yeah. enough. And I had to go back and get another one with her. Probably and she much did. Rest she spanked my right? legs and my butt all the way down the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't challenge Did you that uh, uh, get uh, like 
I challenged him. Got the carton of uh, <laughs> the oysters and then some Who do you think I beef? hold up you or Rick? I don't know. I probably did. He learned from me. I can remember that we used to fight. I mean, do you see him dipping? We would just slug they get dipping out of big pail. It's dipping on the back end. Had it, just remember. absolutely had it with us. And she, we were in the den, and she started moving the furniture back. And she said, "I want y'all to fight. If you fight to one of you, kill each other, because I'm done." And we got on. We were on the floor slugging it out. <clears throat> I finally called it. Said. Because then I realized that he was bigger than me and he could get me. Oh, uh -huh. so we didn't fight anymore. The brush should be genius. Well, that's a good way for her to put an end to it. <laughs> just let you just fight it out. Fight it out. I'll fix the door. Oh, it's good. Now. How's it look, Bryce? Does it look like it's ready? I think it's ready. I don't know, but that's not up to me. You want to take a, get a spoon, and take a little bite, a little bit. Sure. It could be our tester. It's hot, hot, hot. Look, look at the hot. Test it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's not perfect. It's good. Okay. Okay. Dish all it right. out. Numbers on it will go red. Okay. Why are you gonna help me with the oyster stew with a camera? I think you're red. Go ask your mom if that looks right. I'm supposed to be teaching you. Mom, is it red? Is my numbers red? Are the numbers flashing? Oh wait, yeah, I'm recording. Okay, so Mimi, you're gonna need to explain what we're gonna make. I thought I was teaching Bryce. You are, but explain to Bryce. With a camera on his hand? Yep. That you're making oyster stew, and remember to put the camera on his hand. Yep. You're making oyster stew, and remember to, to, mom, remember to say that it's Bob All Carr's recipe and a little bit of that history and everything. Oh, okay, we gotta go through all that. Yeah. We'll edit. You have to explain everything. Did I see you out running around in the dark last night? And we brought yeah, more I milk. <laughs> I may need it because oh, y'all yeah. yeah, was sitting out there in the sunroom and these little lights come down the road. I didn't see a car, but. Bryce, put your cell phone. But I saw yeah. these little lights come down the road. My mother thinks it's cleaning time for my camera. Oh, okay. Car. No! Or whatever. All right, Bryce, give me that, that camera, turn it on, and bring it over here to me. It's on already. But is it recording? No. Start it recording. Okay. Uh, click that button. Oh, okay. We are recording because it's flashing red. Okay. Were you giving this? You're, you're recording right now. Okay. Perfect. So I can see it. And, and not pop the bag. And not pop the bag. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> 